Well, for so many in and around San Antonio, the power is back up and running, but now there is a question about your energy bill and just how much it's going to be costing customers around the Alamo City who haven't had power the last few days. We have the latest from CPS just ahead. And it's not just those high energy bills that are causing people to worry. For some, it's just putting food on the table. Details on food distributions happening in San Antonio today and this weekend. And in far north Bear County, several people forced to leave their homes after a massive fire overnight. And this noon crew is still on the scene. Katrina Weber is going to be bringing us the latest in just a few minutes. Live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. And although we may be warming, the fallout of this winter weather continues to affect people in our community. That's right. We have team coverage this noon, so we're going to start with meteorologist Katie Blake. Katie? Hey, you guys. Yeah, still, uh, you know, a, lo a lot of cleanup out there and so a lot of folks that need help. But I'm happy to report that as far as the forecast is concerned, we are turning the corner. Now it was frigid outside this morning. Skies cleared last night and that allowed temperatures to bottom out in the teens and 20s. We've lost uh, communication with a lot of our sensors off to the west of 35. So that's why you don't see a temperature for Del Rio, Uvalde, Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, uh, New Braunfels as well. But at the airport in San Antonio, 19 was our low this morning. That's a new record for today's date. And keep in mind, our average lows this time of year are in the 40s. So frigid out there, but we are making big improvements as far as temperatures go. We're already up to 35 at the airport and everyone is above freezing with the exception of Fredericksburg. Don't worry, Gillespie County, you will get above that freezing mark here very shortly. Beautiful sunshine out there. We love to see it. Now we need to, that sun to get to work, start to melt all of this wintry precipitation that's on the ground. Uh, dew point is 19, uh, very low there. Winds will be light all day today and into the overnight hours and that could set us up for a little bit of fog early tomorrow morning. But for the rest of your Friday, beautiful sunshine. We'll see temperatures across the area jump into the 40s. We're expecting to see a high around 44 here in San Antonio uh, this afternoon. So nice melting uh, already taking place today. That will continue into the afternoon with plenty of sunshine. Now we do have one more little bump in the road. That's the potential for some freezing fog tomorrow. If you don't know what freezing fog is, I'll explain coming up in just a little bit, but overall big warming trends starting today will continue in to next week. I'll have more forecast details to get you ready for the weekend coming up in just a bit. Max. All right. Thank you so much, Katie. Well, Saw's water pumps now officially reopened. And while many are still without water, Saw's is stepping in to help provide for its customers until their operations are back to normal. The water company has opened their seven water distribution pump stations for customers to receive a maximum of five gallons each. That's right. Alicia Barra joins us live from the Jones Maltzberger location on the city's north side. So Alicia, what should people, what should customers bring if they do plan on getting this water? Well, the first thing you definitely want to bring your container. It can be really any size that you want, but make sure that it's clean and know that there is a limit of exactly how much water you can get. So take a look on your screen right now. These are examples provided by Sauls directly on what containers you can bring. So this includes buckets, reusable five gallon jugs or dairy cans. We've actually seen some people bring like storage containers to fill. There is a limit of five gallons of water per customer. So that's a big thing right there. So don't show up empty handed. We're joined live now by Ann Hayden. She's a communication manager for Saul's. Good morning right now. What's the update with the outages for Saul's customers? Well, we are working at all of our sites. We've got a room full of engineers that have computers out. And what we're focusing now is bringing all of our pump stations up. It's not a matter of one switch and everybody goes online. So we have to bring it up carefully. We'll see uh, water pressure in these areas start pretty low, then we hope to bring them up uh, quickly after that. Which is why there's some relief being provided today. So when people show up, we know there's a maximum of five gallons that they can receive until when will this go on? So today we're uh, working from 12 to six today, and then we're planning on being here eight to six thereafter. And what should people know once they make it here? Long lines here at Jones Maltzberger, there's not much of a line. Yeah, it's really not too bad. Who knows what's going to bring the rest of the day. We do have seven locations throughout San Antonio. And uh, we will be working here daily for a while. And keep in mind that you need to bring your own container, that you need to plan on this being considered not potable just because of our limitations here on distributing it. So plan to boil it once you get it home. 
the drive through locations like this one, they're being helped by Saul's employees, but there's other locations like SeaWorld, I believe SEAL, and Mission Club at SEAL, and those are a bit different. What's happening there? Well, all of those are Saul's employees. The guys here are normally our IS people. So we're all taking on different roles to try to be able to get water out to our customers one way or the other. And then a lot of people wondering, so if they've been out without water for a couple of days, when can they expect to be fully restored and have water running as normal? You know, I always hesitate to say that. We're, we're coming online faster even than I expected. So I don't have a solid information at the moment, so I'm not gonna say one way or the other. We are updating the map on our website though. Um, all the information you need, need to know is there. And also as we come up with bacterial testing and we're able to resend the boil water notice, we'll be posting that on there as well. So it's saws.org slash freeze, F-R-E-E-Z-E. -E. And thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. Sure. So you guys will have all that information also listed on ksat.com. It's already there, but know that right now, even Jones Maltzberger, if you're around this area, you can safely get here. This is a safe option as right now there's virtually no lines. Max, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. The San Antonio Food Bank is serving up relief for thousands of people who were left hungry in the wake of this week's devastating winter storm. The nonprofit will host seven mega mobile food distributions over the coming days. The first two happening today. Our Stephen Cavazos is live at Gus Stadium where a distribution is already underway. Now, Stephen, this started earlier this morning. How's it looking now? Hey, good morning or good afternoon, Stephanie. Well, we have quite the line that's building up here at Gus Stadium, but the San Antonio Food Bank actually anticipates thousands will require the help, and they say this food is not only going to provide them nourishment, but the hope they deserve. If people need food, we're going to have it for them. It's been a mission for the San Antonio Food Bank for 41 years and a lifeline for others. And Friday morning was proof that work has never been more important. The nonprofit will have seven mega mobile food distribution sites that will be open and operate throughout the weekend. And lines already taking shape here at Gustafson Stadium. This food bank team is a group that runs to the crisis, not from it. The nonprofit hopes to provide 100 pounds of food and water to thousands of people who are still hurting from the cold. We met Bobby Hall, who was the first to get to Gustafson Stadium. He said he had got to the site at 1 in the morning. This is where I'm going to be. I'll be here first thing in the morning. He says food at home is running low and is concerned for his family at an all-time high. Hopefully it will help us until next Friday when I get paid. I'm retired and disabled. But the nonprofit wants people like Hall to know help is on its way. San Antonio police plan to deliver food to the elderly and some of the most vulnerable. Hundreds of other volunteers expected to serve the community during one of its darkest weeks. Hall says it gives him hope there is light at the end. It's not a simple thing. They're braving the elements to be helping us, and I greatly appreciate that. Now, a second distribution site is happening right now at the San Antonio Food Bank location. That's going to be going on until 4 this afternoon. However, if you miss today's distributions, don't worry. This is going to be going on throughout the weekend. And the, the food bank, that is, is asking that people pre-register before arriving. However, they say as long as supplies last, no one will be turned away. You can head over to our website at ksat.com for a full list of this weekend's distribution sites. Reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Max Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Now to an update this noon. After improvements overnight, we are seeing more and more homes getting power restored. And at this hour, we know, according to CPS's outage map, 92 active outages, 642 total customers affected. A big change from the last couple days. And with that, the concern now moves to the cost. A lot of people out there likely worried about potentially higher energy bills. So during a media briefing this morning, CPS CEO Paula Gold Williams said the cost of the event is going to be huge. Market price of electricity shot up during the outages. The price of natural gas shot up at least 16,000%. And part of your CPS bill is based on the cost of fuel, so those prices will affect how much you owe, too. Gold says the goal is to at least make sure customers are not hit with the brunt of all of these costs all at once. CPS stressing, though, no one will be disconnected while payment is being worked out.
And in terms of blackouts, the entire state of Texas letting out a collective sigh as of, of relief early this morning as ERCOT, the agency that operates the state's electric grid, announced that we have moved out of emergency operations. That means no more rolling outages, and hopefully the work can now begin to determine why so many millions of Texans were forced to go without power for so much of this week. ERCOT president and CEO Bill Magnus did quite a bit of reflection during the media briefing today, saying they made the right call to shed the load from the grid, but realized that it did have awful consequences. There's a company that uh, has a job of make, trying to do everything we can to make sure that power is provided every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Watching those heartbreaking conditions over several days uh, was terrible. And we are far from done. Texas lawmakers already announcing plans for an emergency hearing next week to examine what went wrong and ERCOT's role in all these outages. And it has been almost 24 hours and there is no end in sight to the work firefighters are doing in far North Bear County. A fire that broke out yesterday and an apartment complex on TPC Parkway continues to smolder now. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report and we know they had water problems. Has there been any relief yet? No, and that is the big problem here. The firefighters have to wait for water to be brought in by trucks. Now, the uh, water situation is due, they tell me, to outages, water outages in this area. And as you can see, that has led to catastrophic destruction. Yep. Part of the building collapsed under the heat late last night. Some of our viewers captured the cell phone video. The people who live here say they had received an alert to turn off their water heaters. Then moments later, they saw fire. Firefighters told me it started between the first and second floor. They've been here at the Cortland View at TPC since about one yesterday afternoon. And they told me they're not leaving anytime soon. In my opinion, I would assume, you know, at least until next week, at least once we get, you know, the water pipes thawed out and water actually flowing, uh, allow quicker, quicker um, extinguishment. Now, these firefighters have had little to no sleep fighting what appears to be a losing battle. They say about 130 apartments have been lost in this fire. I also counted more than a dozen burned cars both outside and inside the parking garage under the building. About 50 to 60 people who live here have been evacuated. Now, some of them went with family and friends, but some also went to a shelter that was set up, a temporary shelter set up at Johnson High School. And there's no word yet on what is next for any of them. Reporting live in Far North Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Now to the latest on COVID. We know COVID vaccine appointments have been affected by the weather and they keep getting rescheduled. So if you're a little confused, here's a look at what the new schedule for appointments looks like. So if you were scheduled to go to the Wonderland of the American site on Monday the 15th or Tuesday the 16th and you missed your appointment, it was rescheduled for tomorrow. All Thursday appointments rescheduled for Monday the 22nd and today's appointments were moved to next Tuesday the 23rd. Those who missed their appointments on Wednesday, February 17th, may go to the Wonderland of the Americas on Saturday, Monday, or Tuesday between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Appointments that were scheduled at the Alamo Dome have also been rescheduled for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. As the temperatures warm up, a new concern for people here, leaky pipes as they melt, as all the ice melts out there. Advice from a master plumber, that's still ahead. And we are checking in with our David Sears once again as he starts to thaw out of all the ice and the snow. We're going to check in right after the break. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. Now I have another deal for you that your dentist will thank you for a portable water flosser. This item is perfect for the entire family and it works for implants, braces, crowns, and bridges too. It's a cordless water flosser teeth cleaner by Dr. Bay. Sounds like a mouthful, but this award-winning flosser really supports great oral health. We'll actually give it a little try here. Woo. 
That is a lot of pressure there, so you know it's getting the job done. Now it has a 360 degree rotating nozzle, cleans every corner of your mouth, and in between your teeth, three adjustable water pressures. Choose the best mode for your teeth. It also comes with a flosser, nozzle, and USB cable and travel bag. Helps also to fight gum disease, and you'll have that great smile. Now the retail price is $59. The case at deals price, $46.95. That's a 21% Discount. Now you can find this deal and many more at KSETDeals.com. Well, welcome back. Even though the weather radar not as active today, it is still chilly out there and everything starting to thaw out a little bit. Let's go ahead and check in with David Sears, who is live in Colmel Aww. County. Now, David, you haven't had power, you haven't had hey. water for almost a week. Yeah, no, uh, still no water. We'll talk about that in just a second. We do have power, had that for a while, so we're in good shape there. And we've got sun power. Look at this. Oh, man, that feels so good on your face. No stocking cap, no scarf, no gloves. And it's not even 40 degrees yet. How great is this that we've been able to at least warm up? Well, step by the way, you can see. Uh, there's grass out there. A lot of the snow is starting to melt. So on Sunday night, we went through the big freeze and big snow. Then we had a minor chill. And then we had the uh, little uh, thaw out. And then we had another freeze and another snow. And now we got the major thaw out. So, uh, so things are looking good here in Comal County. A lot of folks are still without water. So I want to tell those folks that if you are in one of those neighborhoods where you don't have water, Canyon Lake Water has set up some uh, distribution centers around the county. They've got some potable water for us. So if you are without water in one of your neighborhoods, get on their website and check it out because they've got some uh, directions for you on how they can help you out with some potable water. And they also are telling us which neighborhoods they're working in and which neighborhoods still don't have water. So they're kind of updating us with their uh, website and their Facebook page here in Comal County, Canyon Lake Water doing that for us. So uh, we'll uh, hopefully get uh, get the water system back online here pretty soon. And uh, now I guess the next thing is we pray that we don't uh, have any busted pipes now that everything's thawed. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. But everything's looking good out here in Comal County. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. I love how cheery he is. Well, he's very happy because the sun's out. I hadn't noticed until I was looking at him right now. This is the first time we see David without his gloves, scarf, mm. and yeah. hat. Yeah. So he has had such a good attitude. Yes, he has. Such a good attitude. And I'm glad for David and for everyone else that we have pretty much full sunshine today and it will continue into the afternoon and that will help to start the thawing process at the airport already up to 35 after a morning low of 19. So this sunshine is really doing some work today to help warm us up. We'll top out mid 40s this afternoon and the warming trend continues through the weekend. Sunday afternoon we're in the 60s and that will continue into next week. A detailed look at your weekend forecast coming up in just a couple minutes. Well, welcome back. Katie Blake, we're just going to throw it right to you. Is the worst behind us now? Uh, Weather-wise, yes. Yay! Yes. <laughs> I, you know, do, yeah, weather-wise. I don't want to give the all clear because we've got folks that will be dealing with the, you know, uh, lingering effects of this into next week. And a lot of our neighbors still need help getting back on their feet. But as far as the weather forecast goes, like I said, we are turning a corner here. Something I want to point out as we look at this shot of live cam uh, pointed near the airport. So I, I think with the sun out today, it's getting warmer. A lot of people are going to be like, let me out of my house. And they're going to want to get out on the roads. Maybe you've got some errands to run. Um, something I want to point out. So this is 410. This still appears to be closed. We've got some cones there um, and the roadways here, especially our elevated roadways that have still been carrying some snow this morning are starting to melt, but they're still closed and that is resulting in a big traffic backup here on the on the surface street. So this is uh, 410 and Broadway. So just something to keep in mind. I know you'll want to get out today, but keep in mind we do still have some roadways closed um, as things start to melt and as we continue to thaw out 35 at the airport light southeast winds just about two to five miles per hour. So we're going to 
Start looking forward here, but one more look back at our snowfall yesterday. The highest totals were well to the west. Del Rio, you were the big winner here. Some snowfall totals near 10 inches. Even saw a couple of reports getting close to a foot of snow. Brackettville, seven and a half inches of snow. Uvalde, five inches of snow reported here in San Antonio, about two and a half inches, but some higher totals in far northern Bear County. And as you got into portions of the hill country, even 5.3 inches of snow up near Canyon Lake. Well, that snow is really starting to melt today, and this is really cool. We can see it on our visible satellite picture. We've got what's moving there. That's cloud cover. Everything else, all the other white that's not moving, that is our snowpack left over from yesterday and in some cases up in the hill country from several days ago. And as time goes through here, the past three hours, you can see the snowpack is gradually starting to melt down and condense in on itself. But again, look at all this snow that still lingers out in the west from western Kenny County over to Del Rio. So our friends in Del Rio, you got a lot more snow, so it will take a bit longer for that snow to melt. But uh, the thawing out, the great thaw, as our news director uh, lovingly called it today, has begun. Sunshine will continue into the rest of your afternoon. That will help us to jump into the 40s, uh, even upper 40s, well down to the south. As we get into the weekend, tomorrow morning, skies will be clear, but we are going to start off with some fog. This could be freezing fog, and basically freezing fog is just fog that forms when temperatures are at or below freezing, and it can cause some issues. More on that in just a minute. As we get into Saturday afternoon, certainly after lunchtime, more sunshine tomorrow. Another uh, pleasant day. We'll see temperatures jump into the 50s tomorrow as compared to the 40s today. Sunday morning, I do expect we'll start off with some more patchy fog. That won't be freezing fog regular old patchy fog as we get into Sunday morning with some morning clouds giving way to some afternoon sun. I wouldn't be surprised if we're partly cloudy Sunday afternoon, but warming trend will still continue into Sunday nonetheless. So a little bit more on this freezing fog again. It's just like fog, but it forms when temperatures are at or below freezing. This reduces visibility just like plain old fog, and it can also make surfaces icy. That includes roadways, especially elevated roadways. So basically the tiny super cooled water droplets inside this fog freeze on contact with surfaces when temperatures are at or below freezing. So that can make surfaces icy, including some elevated roadways. So if you will be out very early tomorrow morning, that is something to consider. Take it extra slow if you've got to be out on the roads and Sarah Spivey tomorrow morning on Good Morning San Antonio. Max as well will have current conditions for you. A look at where that freezing fog has developed overnight tonight. Temperatures now 35 in San Antonio, 39 in Pleasanton. We'll warm into the mid 40s this afternoon with plenty of sunshine. I think we'll top out right around 44, but quickly drop back into the 30s and eventually below freezing tonight. So watch out for that freezing fog in the morning. Otherwise, we just continue to warm up into next week, guys. All right, Katie Blake, thank you so much. And for most folks in our area, we've been saying it, the electricity is back on again. Most people, not everyone, but plumbing, now a big concern. So what advice a master plumber has right after the break. Welcome back. Right now, a lot of plumbers are booked up, and that means some folks are trying to fix the plumbing issues that they are finding after this weather, trying to fix it themselves. So we spoke to master plumber Brad Harrell. He offers a quick Band-Aid fix to get you by until you can get a real plumber, plumber. and that quick fix is a two-inch no-hub and a couple of hose clamps. Take a listen. Cut this to fit your pipe, cut it in the middle this way, and then wrap it around the pipe. Put this hose clamp around the pipe. Now, if you have had no water at all, he actually suggests that you shut off your main water meter. That way, when your water does come back in, it doesn't rush and shock the system. That could lead to more plumbing issues. For a closer look at Harold's advice, you can find this complete story. Just head to KSAT.com. And coming up in the next half hour, another check of your weather. Plus, our David Sears will join us live with the latest from Kamal County. The snow has moved out. However, the chilly temperatures remain. We're going to check in with David Sears in just a few minutes. But first, we're going to check in with meteorologist Katie Blake. So, Katie, what can we expect? Still cool out there, right? We're at 40. But compared to what we've seen, this is feeling 
balmy, tropical almost. Um, <laughs> it's going to feel a lot better out there, especially when you are in the sunlight and we are counting on that sun to really kickstart the melting process. And it's already done a pretty good job this morning. Our snowpack left over mainly from yesterday has already started to shrink. Morning low at the airport, which we've got a view of here on our camera, 19 degrees. That beats the old record set back in 1978 by several degrees. And I expect when all is said and done this afternoon will be in the mid 40s, but that's still well below average for this time of year. Here's a look at that melting snowpack. We've got some up in the hill country, but also yesterday's snow kind of a bullseye with some of the highest totals just along and north of Highway 90, especially off west toward Del Rio. But as the sun has risen uh, today, it is melting that snowpack just over the past few hours. A lot of it likely almost gone. Of course, if you've got some snow on grassy areas, especially in shady areas, that will take a bit longer to melt. But the snow that's on our roadways, a lot of that should really start to clear up beautifully today. We're climbing into the upper 30s now, 39 in Pleasanton, 39 in Bull Verde. Again, a lot of us will see our high temperatures jump into the 40s this afternoon, 36 right now in Canyon Lake. And we want to check in with one of our KSAT team members who, like a lot of folks, has been through a lot this week, but has kept a wonderful attitude. Our very own David Sears reporting live in Comal County. 36 now, David, but I can promise you a good warm up this afternoon. Mm. How did the 40s sound? Oh, that sounds awesome. I lost the coat. I took it off. It's so warm. The sun feels so good. I'm going to have to get some sunscreen here in a minute. And, you know, we've tried to keep a pretty good attitude to, through this whole ordeal. A lot of folks have. And I figure early on, you might as well laugh instead of cry because the tears are just going to freeze. And that would just be even more problems and cause a lot of pain. So you might as well see the, uh, see the humor in some of this going on. And a lot of folks have been through a, a lot of situations. been a trying week. And I know a lot of people are tired. So as I leave you from Comal County, first let me tell you this that the Comal County uh, the folks who run the water department out here, Canyon Lake Water, have set up some distribution centers. So if you do not have water in Comal County, get on the Canyon Lake Water website, and they can uh, point you to some potable water distribution centers. So that'll help uh, in the meantime until they get all this uh, water situation taken care of. All right, as we leave you, here's the final shot from Comal County this week. It's been a trying week for a lot of people and even the animals. So take a deep breath, take a little nap, Relax a minute, count your blessings, and then get up and get ready to go at it again. There you go. So we are in Comal County. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. And if you're fortunate enough to have food, water, and electricity, you may be looking for ways to help out. That's right. Meals on Wheels will be delivering meals this weekend. They start volunteer meal deliveries on Monday. San Ministries Transitional Living and Learning Center is in need of drinking or bottled water. You can donate directly to the organization at their location at 5922 Blanco Road. That's right. San Antonio Pets Alive forced to close locations this week because of the storm, but their work has continued to keep their dogs and cats warm. They are asking for donations to help them with their continued efforts. For more information on how you can help these and other organizations in our community, you can go to our website at KSET.com. And after a six-month journey, a major accomplishment for NASA. A look at the historic moment and what it means for space exploration. That's coming up after the break. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. The new Bitcoin ETF soaring on its debut in Canada on Thursday. The new fund called Purpose Bitcoin invests directly in physical digital Bitcoin. It also gives smaller investors access to the coin. In its first day of trading, investors exchanged roughly $165 million worth of shares. This comes as the digital coin continues to notch record highs. Meanwhile, the Bitcoin rally also boosting the rest of the crypto industry as the second largest crypto, Ethereum, nearing $2,000 this morning. That after hitting a a record high of $1,900 on Thursday. The digital coin is up nearly 160% year to date. Ether is the digital coin that powers the Ethereum network. And Twitter making its massive push to increase diversity as the social giant committing to having a goal of at least a quarter of their executives be minorities and women by the year 2025. And this is part of the 25 by 25 pledge, which a number of Silicon Valley companies took on in order to increase diversity in their upper ranks. 
And the Chichetter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. About 20 meters off the surface. Touchdown yeah. confirmed. Yeah. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. Well, there you go. In case you missed it yesterday, an exciting moment in space ex exploration history. NASA's Perseverance rover sending images from Mars after a successful landing just yesterday. The fifth and most sophisticated rover NASA has ever sent to Mars. The rover's mission is to gather data, look for signs of ancient life in a crater that once contained a lake uh, around 3.9 billion years ago. There you go. Yeah, so, long time ago. <laughs> so cool. We were so focused on the snow yesterday. I forgot that was even happening. So I'm glad we got to bring yes, that back. Yes. I'm sure a lot of folks were preoccupied yesterday uh, as well. But look at this view of live cam. This is more like it. The sun is out and we are really starting to warm up. A little bit more good news heading into the weekend. We've got a very quiet pollen count. Mold is low. Mountain cedar still showing up. I said this on Twitter today, like mountain cedar you can see yourself out now. We are done with you. We are past the peak of cedar season. Just you know, skirt, skirt on out of here. But thankfully, everything is low today. The aquifer is down another three and a half feet in the past 24 hours. And we have seen a dramatic drop in the aquifer level just over the past few days. So uh, it has been being pumped over the past several days since this winter weather even began. And now we're down well below stage one levels to 652.2 today. We've reached out to the Edwards Aquifer Authority and we hope to have some uh, some more information for you on that likely coming early next week. We'll take another look at your weekend forecast coming up. The snow was a lot of fun, but I know a lot of people are so happy to see the sun out oh my today. Gosh. There was a great quote yesterday that I heard. It was beautiful and it was pretty and it was fun at first. Yeah. But I'm over it. <laughs> I think a lot of people agree. Yep, definitely, no doubt. And thankfully, no more snow in the forecast for the next couple of days, just a whole lot of sunshine. Another look at low temperatures today. This was kind of our our last uh, hurrah as far as these frigid temperatures go. With clear skies last night, we were able to bottom out in the teens and 20s. You'll notice some missing data off to the west, even up in New Braunfels, Catula. Uh, with this weather event, we have lost contact with some of our sensors out there. Hopefully over the next few days, we'll be able to reestablish communication and get those numbers on there for you. But in the meantime, uh, missing some data from Rock Springs over to Del Rio, we can safely assume that uh, they're in the mid to upper 30s there, maybe low 30s in Rock Springs. It's 35 now in San Antonio, 40 in Pleasanton, 34 in Fredericksburg. So everyone above the freezing mark. Here's how your temperatures play out this afternoon. 40s for most of us, a few spots well down to the south of Highway 90 could definitely touch 50 degrees this afternoon. We'll go mid 40s here in San Antonio, low to mid 40s across the hill country. Warming trend will continue this weekend. Tomorrow afternoon, we're in the 50s. Sunday afternoon, we're in the 60s. We will drop down back into the mid 20s tomorrow, so not as cold tomorrow morning as it was this morning. However, with lows in the 20s below freezing for most of us, that will set us up for some freezing fog to start the day tomorrow. Then we warm to near 60 degrees 45 Saturday night through Sunday morning. 66 Sunday afternoon and plenty of sunshine tomorrow after the morning freezing fog on Sunday. Maybe a few more clouds lingering into the afternoon, but overall much warmer and a lot more sunshine heading your way this weekend. So good news. Uh, one more note about the freezing fog that's expected to develop late tonight into early tomorrow morning. This is fog that forms when temperatures are at or below freezing and that can result in icy surfaces, especially elevated surfaces like our bridges and overpasses. But you may also notice a very, very light glaze of icing on some of your tree limbs tomorrow. If you have an elevated back patio or something like that, you may notice that with this freezing fog. It's kind of a double whammy because not only does it make surfaces icy, it also reduces visibility, so that can make travel hazardous, and we could see a few hours of that early tomorrow morning. So please just keep that in mind. We don't see freezing fog here often at all, so it kind of required a bit more uh, of an explanation there. But basically, if you must be out early tomorrow morning, just take it very, very slow and check in with our GMSA team for the latest conditions uh, starting at 6 a.m. Satellite, plenty of sunshine. What you see here moving out in the Gulf of Mexico behind me and off in the mountains of Mexico, that's cloud cover. All the other white color 
that's staying still. That's our shrinking snowpack this afternoon. It will continue to shrink with plenty of sunshine today. Again, as we head into the overnight hours, we will see some of that freezing fog develop through early tomorrow morning. This could linger through mid to late morning tomorrow. We'll have to watch it carefully, but certainly by after lunchtime tomorrow, we'll see plenty of sunshine and uh, really nice weather heading your way Saturday afternoon. Sunday morning, we will be above freezing, so another round of patchy fog possible, but we won't have to worry about the freezing fog, but we could have some reduced visibilities as we get into Sunday morning. Also additional morning cloud cover by Sunday as well. Both the fog and the clouds will burn off as we head into the afternoon. We could hold on to partly cloudy skies Sunday afternoon, but I think there'll still be plenty of sun getting through as we finish the day on Sunday. The rest of your Friday sunshine hangs around and that will allow our temperatures to climb into the mid 40s for a lot of us light winds. And really, it's the light winds in place today that will continue tonight that play a part in some of that freezing fog developing late tonight. So watch that early tomorrow. After tomorrow morning, we don't have a freeze in the forecast. <laughs> Look at Wednesday. I mean, this is just amazing. We went from 19 degrees to 72 and sunny. Yep. Yeah, San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. And a new take on an iconic Disney villain. A look at the new movie taking on Corella DeVille. That's after the break. Beyonce is helping Texans and those in surrounding states hit hard by the wintry weather. The singer's Be Good Foundation has now teamed up with Adidas and the Houston Disaster Relief Group Bread of Life. People impacted by the storm can apply for up to $1,000 in aid through Bread of Life's online form. And there's a new Cruella de Vil ready for the big screen. Emma Stone takes on the role in an origin story of the infamous Dalmatian-loving evil villain in the latest Disney film. As CNN's Jeannie Moose reports, the newest released trailer already getting a lot of attention online. The return of a cruel villain by the name of Cruella. Just what we needed to cheer us up. A psycho. <laughs> Emma Stone has perfected the evil laugh of Cruella de Vil. Think Devil, set in punk rock 1970s London. But a new day brings new opportunities. In this case, the opportunity to make a prequel, the origin story for Cruella from 101 Dalmatians. The puppies, darling. <laughs> she bleeping skins puppies. Who wants this movie? Well, millions have viewed the trailer with this scene getting the most love. Wow! Though someone reminded that drag race Thailand queen Candy Zionide actually lit her dress on fire to reveal a second gown underneath. Hi! 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 Years before Cruella did. How does the saying go? I am woman. Hear me roar. Where have we heard that before, Michelle Pfeiffer? I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. I'm Cruella. No. But the most frequent comparison was to the Joker. Kinda has a the Joker wears Prada vibe. Disney's own female Joker. My life is nothing but a comedy. Cruella definitely has comedic flair. This seems to be the movie's tagline. I was born frizzy. Born fast. And a little bit mad. Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. Thoughts?
Looks good. It does look good. <laughs> all right, well, it is Feel Good Friday on SA Live, and after this long week, we all need it. Yes, we do. David, Fiona, and the whole team are helping to bring some sunshine to close out your week. Oh, well, what a week it has been. It's been a frigid week, to say the least, right, David? <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. You know, um, I haven't been in the house this long in a long time, but, you know, I'm glad that the week has come to an end. And I believe we're going to start falling out, which is great. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, speaking of frigid, one thing that hasn't been that way is people towards each other during times like this. It is amazing to me at how our community comes together when things really hit the fan, okay? And Jen Tobias Strusky is going to have a look on this Feel Good Friday at some of those stories. And it's a good Friday, so it's kind of a double whammy good Friday. And that also means Lent is here, so that means seafood is all the rage, taking you inside Smashing Crab for a episode of Texas Eats right here inside of SA Live. We're gonna get the scoop on all the delicious food they have, especially those mud bugs. Everybody wants the crawfish right now. All right, well, these temperatures can of course wreak havoc on your skin, okay? So we're gonna let you know what you need to know to make sure your skin stays healthy during these winter months. Plus, Matthew McConaughey joins us again to finish up his interview with Jen Tobias Stresky. And this time he's sharing more of his personal stuff, some more of the stuff that you're gonna find in his book as well. But we're gonna get the full interview, the rest of it today on SA Live. So green light, SA Live continues in just a few minutes.